Okay, I'm going to talk to you about cell structure. So cells make up all living things. Some organisms like bacteria are just made of one cell, whereas animals and plants are multicellular, made of many, many cells. So they're tiny kind of building blocks of all living things. Um, so what we're going to start with is we're going to start by looking at a plant cell. So around the outside of a plant cell, we have what's called a cell wall. Think of a wall going around the outside of a room. So the cell wall provides structure and support. Um, right, just underneath the cell wall, we have another structure, which is called the cell membrane. What the cell membrane does is it helps to control what comes in and out of the cell. So it's a little bit like a bouncer, allowing only certain things in that's going to be good for the cell and certain things out. So that's the cell membrane. What we also have is this part here, which is the nucleus. The nucleus is where all of the DNA is stored, so where all of the genetic material is stored. Next up, we have these things quite a few of them in a cell, particularly if it's in a leaf, which are called chloroplasts. Now these chloroplasts is where we have the site of photosynthesis. Now what photosynthesis is, is using light to make glucose. Whenever you see the word photo, we know it's something to do with light. Synthesis means making. So in the chloroplasts, we have this particular pigment called chlorophyll. And this is where those reactions happen to allow the, um, the plant cell to make its own glucose. Now, next up, we have this big structure in the middle of plant cells called a vacuole. Now this vacuole contains cell sap. Now, because it contains sap, it allows the plant cell to have its particular shape. It allows the cell to remain turgid. So it's a weak solution of sugar and salts contained within the middle, the vacuole. Next up, we have these structures called mitochondria. Difficult word to spell. I'll just write it down for you now. So mitochondria. Now, in mitochondria is the site of aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is a way that we release energy from glucose, also using oxygen. The word aerobic means with oxygen. So all of these mitochondria throughout our cell provides energy for the cell to do all of its processes that it needs to do. So that there is a plant cell. Now, how does an animal cell compare? I'm going to draw it just here. So here is our animal cell. Now, the animal cell is actually has fewer features than the plant cell. So just like the plant cell, it has a cell membrane. Also, it does exactly the same job. It helps to control what comes in and out of the cell. It also, just like, just like the plant cell, it also contains a nucleus. So this nucleus contains the DNA. Also, just like the plant cell, it contains mitochondria. Again, exactly the same job, the site of aerobic respiration. Now, I've just realized I've forgotten one feature from here, which is also in animal cells. They both contain something called the cytoplasm. Now what the cytoplasm is, is it's the jelly-like substance, the jelly-like substance within cells um, where loads of chemical reactions take place. So it's this jelly-like substance which all of these other organelles are kind of suspended within. Loads of chemical reactions happen there. 
So we can see there's not actually anything that an animal, animal cell has that a plant cell doesn't have. However, there's a few things that a plant cell has that an animus, animal cell doesn't have. For example, a plant cell has a cell wall, chloroplasts, and a vacuole. All of these three things animal cells do not have. So there's one more type of cell we just need to look at. So we are going to look at bacterial cells. Now bacteria also, like plant cells, contain, contain a cell wall. They also contain a cell membrane and they also contain cytoplasm. So there's some definite similarities right there. However, Instead of having a nucleus, remember both of the other two had a nucleus where the DNA is stored, they've actually got this long circular chromosome, which is called chromosomal DNA. Now this is just where all of the genetic information is stored. Here and also in these things called plasmids. Now these plasmids are just simple circles of DNA. Notice how it doesn't have any mitochondria. It also doesn't have a vacuole. It also doesn't have chloroplasts. So the last thing that we need to know about is this strange structure that comes off a bacterium called a flagellum. Now all this flagellum is, it's like, a little bit like a tail. It just spins round and allows that bacteria to move. Because remember, a bacteria is a single cell organism. So, that's all. Thank you.